I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. Well, Pete, today we are going to talk about intimacy, which we realize we've talked about in different ways, but we've never just like spotlighted intimacy before. It's so amazing how there's like so many topics and I uh, mm-hmm. here we are in season four and we still keep realizing there's things we haven't talked about. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, <laughs> which is particularly funny because I know I've said to you before, sometimes I really get sick of hearing myself talk like at work and, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> just like, oh, so yeah, maybe that's cool. Maybe it's because I, I don't get sick of talking to you. I like <laughs> talking to you, but I do get sick of hearing myself, but yes, I'm I amazed, never get sick still of things- hearing you. I never get sick of hearing you either, well, but I do nice. get sick of my, I do get sick of hearing myself. <laughs> but there's like actors and stuff that say that there was some, I don't know who it was recently. Maybe it was somebody big that was saying like, they've never even watched one of their own movies. Oh yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen, I know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny if I link this back to the topic of today of, of intimacy, I mean, that's part of maybe like what I enjoy about like the intimate connection that you and I have. Right. Yes. That's like, I, wait, are we I, having I, sex? <laughs> no, definitely not. Hundred <laughs> percent not. <laughs> I, I joke. I joke. <laughs> Pete's watching me blush uncomfortably. And <laughs> well, and I joke because I think most of the general population will think intimacy equals sex. Correct. That's correct. So I wanted to. Like... I wanted to set, uh, set us up. To <laughs> You, you did it well. You did that well. You did that well. <laughs> so, yeah, it's listed there in intimacy, but it, like there's all kinds of intimacy and connection. And like, it's just an, interesting as, as we're saying this, it's like, I, I enjoy like being connected to you, you know, whereas yeah. again, if it's just like myself or whatever, it's like, not that we can't have connection to ourselves. We do have that and need to have that, but I don't know. I wouldn't say I experience intimacy with myself and that gets, at least for me, gets um, boring. Yeah. Well, and so I, you know, I, I, uh, for our fans, I like to give a definition. So, you know, there's lots of different ways that you could define this. One of them is a private cozy atmosphere. Uh, (laughs) It's not, it's not wrong. Not wrong. What's the, what's the word? Like, um, is it like the Danish, I think it's Danish concept of, I can't pronounce it like high or something. H I H Y G. It's like when you like have like a cozy, like atmosphere in your home. H Y G E E, I think. You're too smart for me. I would just say the <laughs> the, the feng shui. But what, what we're talking about is um, uh, closeness of observation or knowledge of a subject. And so we'll break that down for ways that that might happen. But I like that because that that definitely um, relates to us, right? Because mm-hmm. you, you you have knowledge of me. We're close. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, but that but that definition I feel like is into is like referring more to like like it is like intimate when we're saying we know something intimately that's right it can be like we know it well but it's like it doesn't quite capture intimacy and i think the way that you and i are talking about it today which is part of like connection with another living being yeah yeah particularly another human yeah so let's so how would you how would you work on this uh you know with a client that's maybe coming in saying that they're having a challenge with intimacy or, mm-hmm. or things that, because mm-hmm. so we're saying like you and I as dear friends could be into like, that's intimate. There's um, a, yes. There's a type of intimacy. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think you could also probably have intimacy in pretty much any identity of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I guess for me, like, you know, and again, like definitions, like yeah, whatever resonates with a person, but for me personally, it's like intimacy is, is intertwined with connection. Yeah. So there's different types of connection, yes, right? Yes. Intimacy um, is on the deeper end of that to me. Yes. Um, and that can, you know, and again, we we can move in and out of that in yes. different types of relationships. Um, so there can be an intimacy and in friendship, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I don't know if I would use it in like parent child. It's not exactly the right word somehow to me, but definitely well, but- romantic. Yeah, definitely. There's more of the it's a romantic. It's like because I think, and maybe that's because in romantic connection, yeah. there's it's so thorough because it's like emotional. Again, it depends on the person. Obviously, this is I'm speaking generally, but generally, yeah. romantic connection it often includes intellectual, emotional, and sexual connection. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I'm curious. So you you wanted to divide the fact that you'll see it romantically, you could see it in friendship. 
but you really couldn't see it for parent child. I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't use the word intimate between parent and child. Yeah. And I, I'm, I don't disagree, um, but it's an interesting thing because it's sort of like a it lot is. of these things are socially constructed. Totally. You know, yeah. <laughs> where, you know, totally. We're, we're taking totally. this word and, you know, I, I'm thinking of a friend of mine from like the Middle East who like cuddles with his mom as a 45 year old and sometimes sleeps in the same bed with her, which some yeah. Americans would be like, oh, that's gross. Um, and I, would well, that be funny intimate? I'd maybe, I mean, I guess still it's so funny because even still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word intimate. It's like, yeah. to me, I guess I would use the word loving in yeah. that context, yeah. which is just, again, you're right. Everything's socially constructed. Language is invented. Words yes. are made up, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, this where we can get real, you know, relational frame theory on people like, you yeah. know, so in English, at least I would say in, intimate or intimacy denotes usually experiences i would say in very very close and deep friendships and romantic connection well i love, well, I love what i would say i liked your breakdown it was social you said intellectual emotional and sexual, and sexual. yes yeah. generally like i think that's why intimacy like implies something more thorough whereas like in yeah. a parent-child relationship it's it's more it's not as thorough right, right. it's very specific yeah, because you know. sometimes the, you might not tell deep secrets, you know, to a parent child, but some very, anyway, this is how confusing this could be. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so intimacy. So, I mean, how would you, I don't know if you want to go there right away, but like, sure. how would you, how would you work with someone on that? Oh, let me, before you answer, yeah, tell me. Yeah, because yeah. the thing I'm also thinking is that I, mean, I love how we always talk about how words kind of mess things up and you yeah. said relational frame theory in it. Of course, I was thinking like more from the Western lens, which is like everything's connected and intimacy all around, uh, you know, no matter what the relationship is. Uh, so that that was an int I don't know. I had this observation as we were talking that I felt like my Western brain was kicking in. Uh, Eastern. Yeah. Brain. East like, oh, I was going to well say, I was like, the relationship frame theory is, is Western <laughs> uh, language as, as a behavioral science study of language. Yeah. My conditioning as a Western, but <laughs> having studied the Eastern. Mm, is where <laughs> yes. Uh -huh, yes. Okay. That's, what I, that's what I meant to say. So anyway, so where should yeah. we go? Well, so I guess you're asking like, how would I work with that? Like clinically? Yeah. And of course, yeah. curious here, you would too. It's like, I obviously, you know, and for those listening, like very common thing that people come to therapy about, like, you know, either that's like a presenting problem or it's something that sort of begins to show up, you know, in the course of therapy, you know, if they're struggling in, yeah. in certain relationships, particularly romantic ones. Um, honestly, like it's, it's going, I mean, it takes time, but it's um, work around vulnerability. Yeah, for sure. Right. So, you know, one thing that I talk to people a lot about is that, you know, look, that being vulnerable is very scary. Mm -hmm. There's no way to not be uncomfortable. You know, you can get stronger at it certainly, but like it's inherently uncomfortable mm -hmm. and it's the only path to deep connection. Mm -hmm. So you can't like have your cake and eat it too. You can't have <laughs> intimacy and deep connection if you're unwilling to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, and the vulnerability is, you know, it's a risk because, yeah. you know, you can be hurt. That's the point. Yeah. Um, so it's beginning to do that work of like cracking open and being afraid yeah. in the service of, you know, in this particular context, in the service of one's value of, you know, of love or connection or romantic partnership or relationships. Yeah. Is, is that, it, do you work in a similar of, way or is of, it? Yeah, of course. course. <laughs> You're like, duh. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and especially, but in working, you know, with, with men, especially like, you know, high performing men, the vulnerability mm -hmm. piece is really tough. Yes. Yeah. Very so tough. Yeah. I think I spend a lot of time on that, you know, just trying to help it, it, and what I'll say is I think sometimes what I, I use our relationship. And so the therapeutic mm -hmm. relationship really mm -hmm. helps to kind of model what a healthy uh, vulnerability can look like. Uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. of course, yeah, everyone's still, for, you know, af afraid of trying to let down their guard and kind of connect yes. with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because again, you know, the hardest part is that the letting down of the guard, it really does mean you're opening yourself up to be hurt. Yeah. We've all been hurt, you know, like, yeah. so the choice is, is often difficult. It's like, we can live a life where we're doing everything in our power not to be hurt. Yeah. And maybe in the short term that like kind of works, right? Like we don't feel like as afraid moment to moment, Yeah. but ultimately you're still going to be hurt, but there's no connection. There's no intimacy in relationships. It's like, yeah. or you can really try and you can like take the leap and you're definitely going to be hurt at some point. You're also going to 
cultivate intimacy and closeness and connection with another another human. And it's like, I, I, I mean, I've experienced myself and I'm always telling people like that helps you tolerate the pain that you're going to encounter. Yeah. You know, it's, like it's the more ine- intimacy you have, you know, Absol- with other people. It, it's inevitable. It builds, it builds that muscle. You know, yeah, well, and it's just like nourishing, you know, yeah. I use that word a lot, which I just kind of like sounds like a yeah. cheesy word, but I don't have a better word for it. It's just like, it is like connection is nourishing, you know, it, it fills us yeah. up. It fills us up. It makes me think of why makeup sex, you know, a lot of people will talk about makeup yes, sex yeah. and, and yeah, they'll yeah, be yeah. like, you know, it, it, the movies depict it and sure, like, yeah. every human being has experienced some, you know, really intense makeup sex. So for those that don't know what that is, makeup sex, <laughs> have an argument with a partner. It's not, 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 a cl- not a clinical term. Not a clinical it's not, term. It's not a clinical term, but yeah. Uh, and I don't know the the research around it uh, because that's, you know, that's not one of our areas of expertise. So, but, but makeup sex, you know, have any kind of argument, whether it's around familial thing, whatever, a value dis- disagreement. Um, and then once you can emotionally kind of connect, be vulnerable, mm-hmm. the sex that follows it tends to be deeper be- for that reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, abs- absolutely. And, and look, I, sh- I think what's coming to mind, I, I, want to make sure I also say sometimes like patterns like makeup sex can also be yes. like not effective, right? That people yeah. use it as a cycle, like even, you know, like. Well, they chase it, as, chase it as yeah, a drug almost. Correct. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and sometimes can be, you know, like a negative pattern in like abusive relationships, for example, for as well. Sure. But so I just want to make sure we say that also. Good point. And the, Pete, the, the point that you're making, I think is really important, which is like, yeah, it's an example of, you know, when there's a rupture, Yes. Right. In the relationship, it's like a way we, we often seek, we want the intimacy, we want the connection. Right. Yeah. And and there's like a, there can be like more passion in that sometimes. Right. See, when- it seems like an opportunity to give a shout out to Sue Johnson, who just recently passed away, mm-hmm. as you mentioned about emotional rupture. Um, so that's like a term within emotionally focused therapy, EFT, which mm-hmm. is an yes. evidence-based treatment for couples. Um, and so yes. yeah, exactly what you are highlighting is a lot of what her work kind of focused on. So, you know, yes, um, yes, absolutely. If you and I were a couples therapist, we would probably have devoted a, a, a session, um, an episode to her, but maybe we should, maybe we'll bring like an, well, we should, I on. mean, her work is amazing. It's also it's just, amazing. you know, it's a, it's attached based on attachment research and right. You know, I'm going to, um, I'm going to write that down for us. Okay. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> um, write that down. Well, well, Pete, I'm just wondering, like, you know, again, we kind of like been moving away from like the word of intimacy. Like, does anything else come up for you? Like when we're talking about this, like, you know, again, I'm almost like interchangeably using like love and intimacy yeah. and connection. Does it feel different to you in any kind of way? Or do you, I don't know, or do you vibe um, with what I'm saying? I vibe. I always vibe. Okay, with what you're vibe you always vibe what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I, one of the, one thing I had as we talked about this initially was um, there's also different di- people have different love languages. And so people will mm-hmm. kind of, will create intimacy in all different kinds of ways. So intimacy. Sure, that's a great question. Yeah, that's a good Yeah. Point. So intimacy could be like sitting on a couch for two hours reading a book and not saying a <laughs> word to each yes. other. You know, um, intimacy could also be, uh, you know, going grocery shopping together. Um, intimacy could be, uh, you know, so so the love languages, um, acts of uh, acts of service, uh, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch and gifts. Uh, and so thinking about sort of ways that, any of those things can create intimacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you brought that up. And actually, it was just coming to my mind as you were saying that is like, it's because intimacy is about letting someone into our world. Yes. And mm-hmm. then being let into somebody else's world. Yes. Right. And yeah. that, that, and that's what I was saying, like, it can exist in, in very deep friendship as well. You know, yeah. it's not, it's just, as I've said, like, I think the reason that word often applies in romantic context is because it's talking about like, like, th- like a three pronged approach to yeah. ways that we can let somebody into our worlds. But um, yeah, there's different ways that we can experience that. And there's not, you know, it's, it's also like, I, I think I'm wondering if people listening are thinking like, how do I know if it's intimate? It's like, I would say it's like how you feel. Yeah. Right. It feels I know very were, safe. Yeah. 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 It's safe and scary. I'm going to throw that in there. Well, sure. <laughs> well, scary, probably, but scary at first when you're opening up. That's and right. then once you open up, it's like a deep, yeah. safety and a deep like nourishing connection right it's like a way to be authentically oneself and somebody to be authentically their themselves with you yeah true and i i just keep thinking of the enteric nervous system i mean that's where i think intimacy sort of communicates with the mm-hmm. body mm-hmm. Um, i don't mm-hmm. know what you think about that so i always think yeah well why don't you explain to people what that is 
so it's the gut it's the gut you know seen as like the second yeah. brain mm -hmm. uh so the area in your abdomen um that is the area with the most concentrated amount of neurons in one's body mm -hmm. and so you know when people talk about listening to their gut or following mm -hmm. their gut um i do think that intimacy creates a lot of activity in that area oh that would be i mm -hmm. wonder if there's research on that i bet you there is but I, I, I would go to that too. I mean, I, um, and just again, to be extra clear, neurons guys are uh, brain cells. So that's yes. the only other place in the human body where brain cells exists or in the gut. And so, yeah. yes, I think, well, that's where like, it's interesting you are linking that to intimacy. Cause I would say, I don't feel intimacy in my gut. It's like, mm. that's the information of like, is this safe? Yeah. It's like, is this aligned? Like, is this grounding? And then, but like for me personally, when I think of intimacy, it's like I feel it in my heart. Yeah, you know. Well, because you're I feel like because you're healthier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I, mean, I don't know if that's true, Pete. But I you mean, know, I'm just circuited like a dude, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know if that's true. But would you know what I mean by that? It's like I the do. gut is like it's it's like the that's the part where you're like reading information about like, yeah, is this safe? to be intimate. And then it's like, where do we feel like, again, I'm just speaking personally. And also just obviously when I hear yeah. what people share, it's like that, that fullness in your heart, like that swelling in the chest that feels yeah. um, just very full, you know? That's the nourishing, full nourishing. That's I love that you said full, that. Yeah, nourishing. Yeah, yeah, I know. I always, I, I, it's funny in uh, work with patients. I'm always, I use that word all the time when I talk about values. And yeah. I don't know why. I'll say it to people, I'm like, I feel like it seems like a cheesy word. But when I say it, people are like, no, no, that's what, like, that resonates. That's and the I'm word. Like, that's the word. I was like, that's the word. We got to keep using it. Um, well, Pete, this has been great. I think, you know, we touched on a lot of different um, aspects of, of intimacy here. And and for our listeners, I would just encourage you to just be curious about um, where in your life you experience intimacy and where would you like to cultivate more of it? This has been When East Meets West. I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. And I'm Dr. Pete Economo. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes only.